Eat a Lovelace Day will be observed on October 13th this year. While a lot of us probably know the name Eat a Lovelace, we wanted to devote this episode to taking an in-depth look at her life and contributions. But to get started, we asked Pluralsight author Shelley Benhoff how Ada Lovelace impacted her own career in technology, and here's what she said. Ada Lovelace has always been a huge inspiration for me. I remember learning about her in school and her work on computing principles that were far ahead of her time. She was so forward-thinking that she was able to see the future of turning mathematical calculations into analytical calculations, which of course led to computing as we know it today. As a woman, I never felt like I was not able to study computer science because of trailblazers like her. Her notes on the differences between a calculating machine and an analytical engine are amazing. And if you ever have the chance, I highly suggest that you read them. She was able to see that an analytical engine could potentially work on objects and operations versus mathematical calculations. She used the word objects and object-oriented programming would not be developed for another 100 years. Whenever I'm down on myself about my career or I'm complaining about job stress, I think of her in her corset studying the analytical engine while also being a wife and mother. Augusta Ada King, Countess of Lovelace, was born in England on December 10, 1815 to the famous poet Lord Byron, whose name was George Gordon Byron, and Lady Byron, whose full name was Anne Isabella Noel Byron. To compare Lord and Lady Byron's lives is a study of opposites, and they separated soon after Ada's birth. In contrast with the praise Lord Byron received for his poetry, his life was erratic and often didn't align with the era's perspective of what was proper. Lady Carolyn Lamb, one of the women he had an affair with, called him mad, bad, and dangerous to know. As an interesting aside, Lord Byron would eventually befriend Percy and Mary Shelley and was present to witness Mary Shelley's creation of the story that would become the classic Frankenstein. Lord Byron became sick and died when Ada was just eight years old, leading the girl to be raised solely by her mother and grandmother. Lady Byron prioritized education throughout Ada's life and was especially drawn to mathematics. In raising Ada, she emphasized the importance of mathematics and logic, in part as an attempt to counter the unsavory attributes of Ada's father. Lady Byron was strictly religious and devoted her later years to laudable causes like prison reform and the abolition of slavery. Ada's early life included many challenges. When she was 13 years old, she was paralyzed by measles and spent nearly a year on bed rest. By the time she was 16, she was able to walk with crutches. The challenges she faced didn't hamper the development of her mathematical or technological skills, or her curiosity. At one point, she decided she wanted to learn to fly. She compared different materials that could be made into wings, including paper, silk, and feathers, and then she studied the anatomy of birds to establish correct proportions. She determined that she would need a compass for navigation and that steam could serve as the propulsion. And while the creation of her flying machine was never realized, it's interesting to get a glimpse at how her mind functioned at such an early age. As Ada developed her skills in mathematics, her tutors took note. Among them was Mary Somerville, a noted 19th century researcher and scientific author about whom an entire separate podcast episode could be devoted. Mary introduced Ada to Charles Babbage in 1833, when she was just 17. Since Ada's collaboration with Charles Babbage arguably led to her greatest achievements, it's probably worth spending a couple minutes providing some background on Charles Babbage. Babbage was a mathematician, philosopher, inventor, and mechanical engineer. He's often referred to as the father of the computer due to his work on the first mechanical computers, which he called his Difference Engines. His first, Difference Engine Zero, computed values of polynomial functions using a decimal number system and was powered by cranking a handle. It won him funding from the British government to work on Difference Engine Number One, 
which was intended to solve more complex problems than the original machine. Due to production issues, however, difference engine number one was never completed. According to Babbage's drawings, if it were completed, it would have been composed of around 25,000 parts, weighed 30,000 pounds, and been 8 feet tall. He eventually moved on to designing an even more complex difference engine number 2, but that never entered into production either. Instead, he began prioritizing his creation of the analytical engine, which took the idea of a mechanical computer to the next level. The steam-powered analytical engine employed punched cards and included a central processing unit, which he called the mill, and expandable memory, which he called the store. The analytical engine is the first general-purpose computer that could be described in modern terms as Turing Complete. Or put another way, the logical structure of the analytical engine was basically the same as what has dominated computer design in the electronic era. We've included some links to photos of analytical engine components in the show notes, and it's worth pausing this episode for a minute to check them out. The design of the machine is pretty remarkable, very steampunk. As was mentioned before, Ada Lovelace was introduced to Charles Babbage when she was just 17. She became interested in Babbage's work on the difference engine and analytical engine, and contributed to the latter by translating an article written by the Italian mathematician Luigi Manabrea. Beyond a mere translation, however, she also included a copious set of notes and corrections that were three times longer than the original article. These notes included an algorithm for calculating a sequence of Bernoulli numbers using the analytical engine, which is seen as the first published algorithm specifically tailored for implementation on a computer. This achievement is why she is often referred to as the first computer programmer. Her notes also theorized a method for the engine to repeat a series of instructions, a process we refer to today as looping. It was clear that she saw that the potential of the analytical engine went far beyond simple number crunching. She wrote, The analytical engine might act upon other things besides number, were objects found whose mutual fundamental relations could be expressed by those of the abstract science of operations and which should also be susceptible of adaptations to the action of the operating notation and mechanism of the engine. Supposing, for instance, that the fundamental relations of pitched sounds in the science of harmony and of musical composition were susceptible of such expression and adaptations, the engine might compose elaborate and scientific pieces of music of any degree of complexity or extent. In other words, she foresaw a future in which computers could tackle abstract scientific concepts and even produce complex musical compositions. Ada Lovelace's important contributions to Babbage's project led him to refer to her as the Enchantress of Numbers. Unfortunately, the analytical engine was never fully completed. This was in part due to Charles's inability to deliver the difference engine that the British government had funded. Babbage's son was able to complete a version of the difference engine after his father's death, and in 1991, the London Science Museum built a complete and working version of Babbage's difference engine number two. A 2019 campaign called Plan 28 sought to finally construct a functional analytical engine, but progress on that project seems to have stalled. Unfortunately, Ada Lovelace didn't live to see further development in computer science. After several months of suffering, during which her friend Charles Dickens visited and read to her, she tragically died of cancer on the 27th of October, 1852. She was just 36 years old. The work of Babbage and Lovelace would go on to prove extremely influential on the computer scientists that came after them, including Alan Turing and John Van Neumann. Ada Lovelace's work rose to prominence a century after her death, primarily due to B.V. Bowden's 1953 book, Faster Than Thought, A Symposium on Digital Computing Machines. This book republished her original notes and draws a clear progression between her work and the modern computer age. A full copy of the book is available on the Internet Archive, which we've linked to in the show notes. In the 1970s, the U.S. Department of Defense developed a high-order computing programming language. When U.S. Navy Commander Jack Cooper suggested naming the new language Ada in honor of Lovelace, the proposal was unanimously approved. 
The ADA programming language is still used around the world today in the operation of real-time systems in the aviation, healthcare, transportation, and space industries. In conjunction with her technical achievements, it is Ada Lovelace's vision that continues to inspire programmers today. Driven by her curiosity and love of mathematics, she worked tirelessly to understand the analytical engine and eventually expanded that understanding into a perspective that has proved prophetic. Her legacy is one that has changed the world. Thank you for listening to All Hands on Tech. If you haven't yet, make sure to check out the show notes for today's episode. Thanks also to Shelley Benhoff for her contribution. Thanks again, and have a great Ada Lovelace Day on October 13th.